Hey, what's happening, guys? Thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. I have today what I think is a fascinating video. I'm hoping that you guys find it interesting as well. Um, kind of what I want to bring this all back to, I think a lot of times we have reasons why we can't start a business. Oh, I, I don't have enough money. I don't know everything I, that I need to know. I, I don't have enough resources. I don't have anybody to help me out. I'm so busy with my job. I, whatever the excuse may be, my, myself included, I think we all come up with these excuses why we can't get started. And I think as we all know, the most important thing is just getting started. I think one of the most important aspects to starting a side hustle, being an entrepreneur, starting a business, heck, being successful in anything you do is, is being resourceful and being able to do what you can with what you have, even if you're not quite prepared. Um, and that's kind of what the story I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is about. Uh, this gentleman right here, uh, this was an interview on uh, Life After Fresh Out, Big Herc's Prison Channel. We're going to be talking a little bit about prison channels today as well. Um, he has a fascinating three-part interview. Thus far, they've aired two of the three parts. Uh, this guy's got a fascinating life story. Seems like a cool dude. But the one thing I really wanted to highlight about his story, while he was in prison, he started an eBay business importing Nokia cell phones from China and selling them on eBay while he's behind prison walls. He and a couple of his partners also ran a pirate radio station um, out of the prison for over a year. Um, and they also started their own website. They started a website or a blog. They started creating content uh, out of prison. And I believe it was called Inmates Gone Wild. And in just a moment, we're going to hear a little bit about his story. Um, if any of you guys don't follow or haven't heard of prison channels, uh, it's kind of one of the hottest new categories on eBay. Oh, and by the name, by the way, this gentleman, uh, his his uh, YouTube channel is Bounce Back Life After Prison. I'll link to him as well as these interviews in the description box below. Uh, this guy's at uh, 1,222 subscribers right now. I guarantee you, if you check back on his channel in a year, he's going to be over 100,000 subscribers. Prison channels are super hot. Uh, he's got a great presence on camera. He has interesting stories to tell. He's a great storyteller. Uh, I guarantee you his, his channel is going to be over 100K within a year. Um, but going back to these prison channels, you know, there's a number of them. This guy, uh, the After Prison Show, he's got over a million uh, YouTube subscribers. Uh, Lockdown 23 and 1. This, this dude's pretty interesting as well. You guys might, might find his channel interesting. Uh, all these channels are about life after prison, telling prison stories, etc. But one cool thing about this guy here, uh, he actually earns his living. He has an Etsy business and he and his dad uh, paint these wooden these wooden uh, surfboards, like decorative surfboards to put on the bar of a wall, uh, on, on the wall of a bar or a restaurant or something like that. I know in one of his recent videos, he actually did a two or three part series showing how he actually makes and, and paints these surfboards. Um, I know they've done some work for Hooters and some bigger companies. Um, and one thing that I find that all, a lot of these kind of after prison shows have in common is all of these guys are what we would call entrepreneurs. Now, when I was at uh, Ecom Chicago the other week, this is a topic that co kept coming up a lot. And it's a topic of like solopreneurship or entrepreneurship. And it's it's not having to have employees and start this big full fledged business. It's not necessarily having to having to sell products. Entrepreneurship is all essentially entrepreneurship is you are the business. Uh, using your knowledge, your skills, your experiences to create a business out of yourself. A lot of times that may come down to content creation and maybe uh, maybe something freelancing wise. Uh, but I noticed all these prison channel guys, uh, they're very entrepreneurial. Uh, Big Herc has a line of Merc, uh, Merch, <laughs> Merc. Big Herc has a line of merchandise that he sells, t-shirts, hoodies, hats. He also has a uh, like a workout supplement line. He's a swole dude. Um, so he's got businesses going. This guy's painting stuff on Etsy. All these guys have turned uh, their YouTube channels into a way to make money. And, and they've taken a situation being in prison, which is probably one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. And they've turned it into a positive and figured out how to make money off of this. Now, for any of you guys wondering, like, like what's really what's a prison channel all about? Um, I think part of it is if you're going to prison and you want to be prepared, um, you want to make sure somebody doesn't bust your cheeks. As Big Herc says, you can kind of go get some life lessons and stuff from here, uh, how to behave in prison. Some of these guys even offer consulting sessions for people going into prison uh, to kind of prepare them. I wouldn't be surprised if a few of these cats got like ebooks and things like that as well. Uh, but I also think it's kind of entertainment. I, I think we as people, I think we, we're interested in walking in somebody else's shoes. We're interesting, interested in hearing about other people's lives and, and maybe like a subculture that we'll never experience. So part of it, I think, is just entertainment and kind of the fascination of this. Um, and here's what's kind of interesting, too. Actually, 
I, I want to get into this guy's story. Hang with me. Um, another guy who's got a prison channel. I don't know if you remember this guy. This kid went viral a couple years ago. Uh, he was hitchhiking. The guy whose car he was hitchhiking in um, went crazy, smashed into a highway worker on the side of the road, uh, then tried to attack a woman. Kai, uh, the, the traveling hitchhiker, uh, hops out of the car with a hatchet he carries in his backpack and whack, whack, whack. Uh, stop the guy from assaulting this woman. And you guys may be familiar with, uh, what's the name of this channel? Uh, Shmo, Shmo Yoyo. They do a lot of funny memes. Um, and they actually did a meme that kind of sent Kai viral. Um, but Kai actually, he's actually running a YouTube channel out of prison and it's, it's not the greatest sound quality. He's kind of giving kind of like uplifting kind of personal development talks on a prison phone. Somebody on the other end is recording it and posting it to YouTube for him. But if you guys don't remember the story, I'm going to play this for you real quick. Yeah. Can we talk? Do you mind? What do you want to talk about? What happened today? Well, well went straight out of Dogtown, <laughs> skateboarding, surfing it up. Before I say anything else, I want to say no matter what you've done, you deserve respect. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. And it doesn't matter your look, skills, or age, or size, or anything, you're worthwhile. No one can ever take that away from you. You can kind now, of see the, the kind of inspirational right here, stuff coming out here. I was, well, I was in the passenger side of this fucker's car, and he comes over on there. He was over by the recycling center. He says, oh, when I was in the Virgin Islands, 30 years old, on a business trip, I, 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 uh, I, I fucked this 14-year-old. I was like, you what? He's like, I raped this 14-year-old. He starts crying. gives me a big hug. He's like, fuck, 300-pound guy. I'm like, oh, shit. He must be fuckered, man. Like, what's he talking about? I didn't take him seriously at first. He comes driving down this way. He's like, you know what? I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ, and I can do anything I fucking want to. And watch this. Bam! And he smashed into this fucking guy right there, pinned him in between that fucking truck. And so I fucking, I hop out. I look over. The guy's pinned there. I mean, like, freight train riders know this. Like, if you get pinned between something, do not fucking move that shit. Otherwise, you bleed out. Like, Motherfucker, I, I ran in, I grabbed the keys, he's fucking sitting there like nothing even happened. And like fucking like, man, if you started driving that car around again, man, there would have been a hell of a lot of bodies around here. Fucking, I hop on out, and so I grabbed the bag, I threw it over by that pole right there, and then fucking buddy gets out, and these two women are trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, smash. Okay, and then uh, this YouTube video uh, by Shmoyoyo is actually what sent him viral. A man claiming he's Jesus plows his car into a PG&E worker, pinning him against his truck. The man's passenger comes to the rescue. People say, don't hit Jay. Well, good thing I was hit Jay King. <laughs> that woman was in danger. So I ran up behind him with a hatchet. Smash, smash, <laughs> smash. You guys probably remember that video. Um, but anyhow, this guy's also got his own uh, prison channel now as well. So it's kind of a hot category. But really, I, I thought this gentleman's story uh, was fascinating. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of a clip here for you. And like I said, I connected with him via email the other day. Um, I know he's really trying to kind of grow up his channel and, and kind of grow subscribership. I think he's got a fascinating story. And he's very entrepreneurial as well. Prior to going to prison, um, yeah, he was selling drugs, you know, not to, to glorify selling drugs, but... Uh, T.D. Jakes, the kind of inspirational speaker, he, he kind of has a great speech that he gives um, about kind of helping mentor people in the inner cities and things like that who are into drugs, who don't have a lot of opportunities. He says someone who's willing to, to stand out on the corner from sunup to sundown, who can manage employees, who can manage a supply chain. He says these people are our future executives. They just need guidance and, and and they need to kind of be pointed in the right direction as opposed to doing negative things and doing positive things because all the skill sets that it takes to run a drug business can be moved over to, to the real world. So anyhow, this gentleman was initially selling drugs. He eventually put, took some of that drug money, um, bought a dump truck and started uh, like an excavation company, um, did that for a while, ended up going to prison. I'm going to kind of save his whole story. Uh, you guys can check him out on Big Herc. Again, it's a three-part series. Uh, they're on part two. I'm anxiously awaiting the third part. And uh, Big Herc is really taking advantage of this kind of a cool new tool that YouTube has. So when you release a video, you can basically release a video as like a premiere. And you can kind of make it an event, and people can talk about it in advance of it. And people are looking forward to it happening. It's kind of a feature I might start using for Side Hustle Tuesdays. Total aside there, but it's kind of an interesting feature. Anyhow, I'm anxiously awaiting the, uh, the third episode of this series. Um, but in prison, he had businesses as well. And when we were chatting through email the other day, he said he's always been very entrepreneurial. And I, I think that's evident from um, 
you know, the eBay business, the podcast, the website, as well as uh, his own channel here, uh, which again, I'll link to below, Bounce Back Life After Prison. But I'm going to play a little clip for you of, uh, of what they were doing. So then um, I get, I, we end up getting internet in the maintenance building. So back then, the whole cell phone game and all that shit, the iPhone wasn't out. So you had this little wireless internet card that would plug into a computer. Well, we worked in the maintenance building, me and my bunkie and another guy that ended up escaping with me. <clears throat> in the maintenance building, my bunkie worked in the electronics department. They had a computer in there. <clears throat> so now we got this, she brings this wireless internet card that we can plug into the side of the computer like in a USB port. Mm -hmm. So from there, we start playing around. We're looking like, a, back then it was like MySpace. There was no Facebook back then, right? So we're looking around, playing around on there. And I'm like, damn, I'm starting to miss my, my freedom even more. I'm seeing all these free world people, you know? So um, my bunkie at the time, he used to sell shit on uh, eBay before he came to prison. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, mate, you know, we can make some money while we're in here. We could order some um, phones from China, sell them on eBay. So we start doing that. We're having them delivered to the, the police's house, the correction officer. Oh, we're having shit. phones delivered to her. There were Nokia N73 or something. Back in the day, that was like the phone. Mm -hmm. So we're having them delivered to her, putting them on eBay. We start making a little bit of money. Um, we had an underground I didn't build it. My bunkie built it. He was like the electronic genius. Underground radio station playing for an entire year out of the prison. What? How crazy is that? A whole year out of the prison at Lake Butler, an underground radio station. So you just need like a transmitter, right? Okay. He made the music on the computer. <laughs> he, he does like club music. So at first it was all like club music playing, but then more people started hearing about it. And they're like, hey, play this. You can't tell people no because they're, they're going to tell. So it, it evolved into where like it'd be an hour of club music, then we'd have like rock music, rap music, every type of music, every type of genre to keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. And then he had it like an automatic timer where it cut off at like midnight or something. Well, that that was going on for a year. We started working on a website called the Inmates Going Wild because we were just going nuts in this place. With her on the team, we, we were doing whatever we wanted to do. Oh, Kazuniha, I, this is kind of what I wanted to bring everything back to, which is if if this guy and his buddies can, from within prison walls, start an eBay business, start a pirate radio station, set up a website, what excuse do you and I out here in, in the free world who have, you know, regardless of what resources we have, a heck of a lot more resources and opportunity than somebody in prison, what's our excuse for not launching our side hustler or not getting something going so be resourceful do what you can with what you have um i thought this was a fascinating story so i just wanted to share it with you guys um and i'm hoping that we'll be able to get him on the channel like i said we were corresponding a little bit yesterday uh if you guys want to see him do me a favor head on over to his youtube channel bounce back life after prison i'll link to it in the description box below um go over there give him a subscribe Drop a comment on his video or go to his uh, uh, discussion chat tab on his channel. Tell him Rules for Rebels sent you over there and you want to hear his story on the channel as well as kind of hear some of his views about entrepreneurship. Um, the guy seems like a hustler um, from everything he's done in the past at, in addition to what he's doing now. And uh, I, I see him doing big things. So uh, if you guys want to see him come on the channel for an interview, a live stream, tell his story and you guys can maybe pick his brain, ask him some questions. Uh, go go give him a sub, drop a comment, let him know I sent you over there, and, and tell him you want him to come on a live stream. We, we want to chat with him. So um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little something different today, but I've, I've been kind of big on the idea of entrepreneurship following Ecom Chicago, you know, making businesses out of what you have, turning yourself into a business, making money out of your your skills, your knowledge, your, your experiences. I think it's a really cool concept. Um, and I thought, you know, some of these stories kind of highlighted that perfectly. So hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. Uh, we're slowly growing. I think we're going to be hitting 100,000 before the end of the year here. So help me out with that. Uh, appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you on the next video.